All right, here's our uh, 1973 Super Beetle. It's a really nice, clean car. It's probably, uh, you consider this the survivor. I don't think it's been restored, but it's been repainted once it looks like. There's a little paint here and there on the uh, rubbers. And uh, overall, the really nice car. Uh, we're gonna do a little service on this today, so I thought I'd turn the camera on. Some of you guys want to check this out because uh, you don't see them this clean very often. But uh, very nice car. Doesn't appear like it's been wrecked in the front. Everything's really nice and straight. This is a 73. It's the last year before they went to the shocks on the bumpers. You see, consider there's a 30 mile an hour bumper. Uh, it's curved windshield. Everything, uh, the running boards could be replaced, but overall it's in great shape. So uh, let's take a look at this. See what we have back here. Doopy 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 doop. We have a uh, fairly original uh, engine compartment. Used to be an AC car. You can see the uh, lines in the back there. Uh, the mount's been removed off of it. Still has the uh, hole in the sheet metal that could be patched up. But uh, all in all, pretty clean here. Uh, got an 09 distributor. Uh, looks like it has the heater still intact, uh, factory air cleaner, everything looks pretty original. The carburetor's been replaced with a smaller unit. This, uh, this usually takes a 32 pick or 34 pick carburetor. They call them the Super Beetle carb. And uh, a lot of times they have a bad bog in them or uh, they'll go bad over the period of years. And this is the replacement carb that was popular for quite a while. Here's a uh, some silicone or some sort of a hard compound uh, JB weld if you replace your uh, carburetor with one of these aftermarket ones you it's a good idea to uh, do something like this or epoxy the uh, plug in the back of the carburetor because it is known to uh, blow out while you're driving the car and uh, it shouldn't cause a fire but it will cause the car to run very bad and normally this plug just disappears when it falls out on the road so Making sure that's uh, staying put is a good idea. You could do it probably a little cleaner than that, but uh, all in all, it's a good idea to secure that in some way or another. So uh, we've got the 09 distributor in here, my favorite. Uh, all in all, it's a pretty clean looking car. It's got a Gates belt on it. Him in for a valve adjustment and an oil change. So there's a few things we'll do back here. The first thing I like to do is uh, check the oil and see where it's at right now. The other thing that a lot of people overlook is these are oil bath air cleaners and you want to service the air cleaner when you do the oil change. So you want to take this off and uh, dump the oil out and put some new oil in there, some freshy. And uh, we're going to do a gear lube service on this also. So this looks like a R and S car. If I had to guess, everything's really uh, neat and in order. It's got the uh, curled up wire there going to the coil from the distributor. That's sort of a trademark thing there. And uh, yeah, so let's uh, put you on the stand so I don't shake you to death. And we'll get some fluids moving on this thing. I don't know if you can see under here or not. But the first thing we're going to do is uh, try to get the stand not to wobble too bad. Sorry guys. We're going to get the oil draining. And uh, what I like to do with the oil is I put it in a bucket here and then I save my uh, old oil containers. And uh, I fill those up. And I even have a, a, a bucket now that I keep everything in. My funnel, all my oil jugs, and I contain it all. That way there's no chance of a spill or anything like that. So I'm check the oil here real quick. It's really low. These only hold uh, three quarts of oil, so this is running on about a half a quart it looks like, so that's not good. But uh, we'll see what she looks like. Hang the dipstick up there. We'll go down here and uh, pop the strainer loose. Got uh, the cars on jack stands. A lot of you guys worry about that kind of stuff. So I got sitting on the jack and uh, two jack stands. Get this loosened up here. Uh, 
got the uh, little uh, copper washers. That's always a good sign that somebody's been uh, showing it some love. You want to incorporate those copper uh, O-rings on your strainer plate or it'll leak. And uh, chances are it'll leak with them. So uh, every precaution that you can take helps. So I like just loosen the last bolt there and then uh, get a screwdriver and pop it back to the strainer plate loose and let the oil drain down. I want to make sure you don't miss a nut. Just missed a nut there. There we go. There's the black magic. No metallic, everything looks really good. This, like I said, this car is a pretty sweet car. I like to pop the valve covers off next. It gives you somewhere to put the uh, strainer. Sometimes the valve covers are uh, a little tight up in there. They will come out though, I promise you. One side there, the head looks pretty good. You want to look at the head and make sure it doesn't look like it's had a lot of heat on it. And, uh, this motor looks like it's been rebuilt. Looks uh, fairly nice. Let's see if you guys can see what we're doing here. Here's the uh, strainer plate. This uh, has a strainer underneath it. It's uh, the only little bit of an oil filter that Volkswagen comes with. And of course, the uh, valve cover is simply held on with the bale. This is your bale. You just pop that down. And uh, here's your valves, your rocker area. Uh, here's your rocker arms. Yeah, you want to make sure that all your little uh, clippies look good when you're looking in here. Uh, you got little spring washers. Uh, you got these clips. These clips almost never come off. Usually what happens is the spring washer, the wafy washer breaks. So you always want to take your finger and run it along the bottom here and make sure you don't have any uh, chunks of washer. Normally it'll be in the valve cover if you do. So there we go, we didn't have a lot of oil in there. But, uh, I think this has been sitting for quite a while, so. Remove the uh, plate. Next, you have to uh, go around the perimeter to get these off. Sometimes they can be uh, sticky, just like this one. So there you go. That's our uh, that's your filter. It's basically like porch screen in there. You know, it catches the big stuff. There we go. Uh, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the. Uh, plug loose off the uh, transmission with that drip for a little bit and uh, I have to set you down somewhere and uh, pop that drain plug loose next so. So we'll just place the bowel cover under there for uh, for the residual there. Get all these fluids draining. This plug can be tight. Usually come loose though. You said it's been 30 years since you changed that. Looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. Pretty nice in there actually. If you wanted to change it though. 
a little bit of metal on the plug, not too bad. So here's what the socket looks like. If you don't have one of these sockets, you can use a 17 millimeter bolt and uh, weld it into an old socket and then you have a drain plug socket. So that gear lube actually looks pretty good. Not too bad, not too bad at all. It still looks uh, amber in color. So that's good. I'll wipe the drain plug off the transmission. And uh, refill that with some uh, fluid. So everything's cold right now. Room temperature is what you want to uh, adjust the valves at. Mm -hmm. So we're going to come back up here and uh, put you on the stand because I'm sure I'm shaking you guys. Shaking. From what I understand, the, uh, the new phone, the iPhone 6 thing that I have, has a better camera than this. I need to find out how to uh, mount it. And uh, the quality of videos might go up a little bit. I think it's easier to edit too with that thing. I'm not sure. <clears throat> there we go. Let you guys tune into the action there. So the next thing we're going to do is uh, rotate the motor over and uh, adjust the valves. Got my wrench. I apologize for that. Engage into the uh, Volkswagen motor there for a minute. Sounds like something's loose here, so I'm going to check the fan. Hmm. That could be a problem coming up. We'll have to look at that. You can hear the, uh, sounds like something's actually loose in there. So we're looking for top dead center. I believe that's the bottom dead center. We're turning it in a counterclockwise rotation. You can see a little dot here and a little notch on the back of the pulley. This is another sign of an RNS car, the white paint here. Uh, it's marked at uh, TDC and 180 degrees on the other side of the pulley. So once we get this on number one, which you check by leaving the wrench here, we'll look under the car, and we're not on number one, so we need to rotate it around one more time, counterclockwise again. There's bottom dead center. top dead center again. I want to verify you have your notch back here and your dimple on the front side of the pulley. Go into the car again. Make sure that the number one cylinder, the rockers do not move. You want them to stay stationary when you rock this back and forth. Now we're on number one. We can adjust number one cylinder. We can go a half a turn to uh, 100 and bottom dead center and it'll be on number two. Rotate it again, another half a turn to top dead center, it'll be on number three. One more rotation, half a turn, and it'll be on number four. So that's why you want to start on number one. You don't have to, but it's a, it's a good habit to get into. So you're gonna need a screwdriver, a 13 millimeter wrench, and a feeler gauge. Wrenches, the feeler gauge that I like, and of course, uh, 
a couple screwdrivers, regular. Another thing I like to do while you're uh, right here is uh, you always want to try to you know take a look at everything on the motor. The fuel line and everything looks really nice. The fuel filter could be changed. We didn't really talk about that. It could just be dirty from age, but uh, I'll recommend changing that. You want to tighten the uh, intake boots up while you're right here. It's just love. You can see how loose this one is. And what that does is that creates a vacuum leak and uh, it'll cause the car to run lean and uh, it burn the motor up. So this is something that's uh, cheap insurance here. You know, put a screwdriver on these. You can see how loose this one is again. And uh, this will definitely affect the way the car runs. These are uh, going to fall off loose. But anyway, this will create a vacuum leak, which is never good on a Volkswagen. I've seen motors actually burn up from these uh, getting a hole in them and people driving them, not changing them. And uh, it'll uh, create the dragon in the motor for sure. The fire breathing kind. All right, so uh, I'm going to go back down on the ground with you here. And uh, I'm not sure if you're going to get this or not. I'm just trying to uh, get as much of it as I can. You know what I mean? This isn't a professional video production, so. So here's our uh, number one cylinder. Again, we rocked it and we made sure that these rockers were stationary, which what I mean by that is neither one of these move. You should be able to grab those. And you want to be able to feel lash in those for sure. Uh, you don't want them to be tight. That's the worst case scenario uh, when the rocker arm is tight. It means the valve is not completely closing and uh, can cause the seat to burn. And it can also weaken the, uh, the valve and cause you problems. Those are uh, dead on there, really nice. So we're going to rotate it half a turn and we'll go on to cylinder number two. So, again. We're gonna come back up here and we're turning counterclockwise half a turn to our next uh, painted mark here, which will be uh, bottom dead center. Okay. We're gonna come back under here and we're gonna verify this the same way we did number one. We're gonna grab both rockers, lash, Lash, so we're good there. Now we're gonna drag our feeler gauge through here and uh, check it out. That's good. That one's good. A lot of times you'll run into this if the motor is uh, maintained properly and the oil's changed and it's not run hot. A lot of times you won't find tight valves. It's a precaution thing with the solid lifter cam. You know, it doesn't have the ability to uh, regulate the valve lash with oil pressure. So it's, uh, it's a mechanical thing. You have to check this periodically. Every 3,000 miles is what they recommend. And uh, make sure that you have lash. Because if you don't have lash, that's the killer of a Volkswagen. That's what burns the valve. That's where it all starts. So let me uh, turn you around here. You dizzy yet? You dizzy yet? Get it? Get it, you dizzy? There you go. That's all you dizzy. This block's cracked on his Model A. Sometimes those valve covers will jump out of you. You can see this car's been serviced pretty regular. It's got a nice uh, gasket on there. It's hard as a rock, but uh, we'll change that. But it's new. And that's uh, it's always good to see. I had to guess it's got yellow glue holding it down. And it's holding it down, all right. All right, this is the three and four side of the motor. And you hear about it on Volkswagens, how the three and four side runs hotter. And you can visually see that this head has more temperature in it. Uh, it's more brown in color. And that's a, that's a byproduct of the heat 
So uh, this side of the motor runs hotter because this is the side that the oil cooler is located on. And we've talked about it before, the oil is uh, how the Volkswagen cools. So you're always going to have some temperature over here. Now you can check the intake valve, you know, and get a reference on the next one. You saw me just go from here to there. But the exhaust is going to be open, so don't get in the habit of doing that. We're going to tighten this one up a little bit. This side's actually a little bit loose. I don't know if I'm getting that a little loose over here. So let's, uh, let's make an adjustment here. And uh, I don't know if I can get the camera on this or not. I'll try to. I'm going to get the tire, I apologize, but I got to get in here and do this, so the way I like to do it is I put the wrench on the nut, I'm going to try to put the screwdriver in the slot, I'll get, it, get on the nut good, I want to break the nut loose, I'll break both nuts loose, and I'll take my uh, screwdriver, and I put it through the wrench, you guys aren't getting any of this, I'm sure. I apologize. <sighs> Hang on. I gotta get my Craftsman camera stand ready there. I don't know if you're getting that or not, but we broke uh, both our nuts loose. Now we have our uh, screwdriver through the wrench. We're going to take our feeler gauge and we're going to put it up here. And we're going to place our screwdriver on the uh, slot. Going to make our adjustment and uh, loosen this nut up. Right. <clears throat> All right, so I don't know if you got any of that. We just looked at the back of my head there. I had to adjust that cylinder was loose. Loose is always better than tight. This is going to be our last one here. And we got something loose up in the fan housing there. We will have to fix that. And these are sort of loose, so I'll go ahead and tighten these up. You get a few days in there. First thing I like to do is break the nut loose. Both of them. Put the feeler gauge back in. The uh, screwdriver through the wrench. Okay, I know there's a slot. There it is. Oh, 
Now tighten the nut, hold the screwdriver tight. There we go. Make sure your uh, adjusting nut is uh, nice and firmly tight. You don't want these kind of loose. I think that pretty much covered the uh, valve adjustment and uh, basically the uh, basic maintenance up there. Next thing we're going to do is uh, take that air cleaner off. That's pretty basic. We just need a Phillips screwdriver or a regular, whatever uh, type clamp you have. Loosen your air hose up here. And uh, 10 millimeter holds the air cleaner on and the top's uh, held on with clips. A couple of vacuum hoses, pull those off. And uh, it's got the regular screwdriver slot here. back here should be free now there we go just loosen these uh, little flappers up of course you know you need two hands for this so I'm going to get my handy camera stand here Sometimes you need a screwdriver, depends on how long it's been. This one's been a while. That's all it takes, a little pry. This one's, uh, the oil's really clean in it. Should be good. You can see the oil down in there. I wanna make sure the level's good. This one is. And go right back together with that. So you can visually see the oil if it's dirty or not. Belt's good to go. I'm going to give it a little twist. It's just still in really good shape. One more line back here to hook up. So I'll make sure everything looks good. Give it a little look in the uh, cap. Uh, it's a little corroding. You could use a cap, use a tune up. It's more corrosion than anything. So uh, that's pretty much it. We'll go ahead and uh, wash up the uh, valve covers, put some new gaskets on those, put the strainer back on, put some oil in there, and that's pretty much the uh, service on a VW. Go up and lube what we can on the front end. There's not a whole lot up there because it's a Super Beetle. If it wasn't a Super Beetle, there's a couple uh, lube points we could go over, but uh, there's none on this. We'll uh, adjust the brakes next, give those a visual.
wanted to do that the pedals a little low but it seemed to stop real well said that they were a little squeaky but it probably hasn't been driven a lot so uh, we'll look at the condition of the shoe and uh, if that's okay we'll uh, adjust it and go from there that's another thing that you'll have to do with the uh, Beetles, the uh, shoes aren't, uh, or the brakes don't adjust by themselves. So you can see here that we have a fairly new bleeder screw up here. The, the wheel cylinder's been replaced. Uh, it's sort of rare to find the caps in the backing plates. So if you work on a car and these are in there, make sure that you put them back in because it keeps the uh, you know the road grime and the water and stuff out of your uh, backing plate area and uh, makes it a little nicer to adjust the brakes and such so your brake adjusting location is right here it's got a little star you can use a screwdriver it's usually what I use one goes counterclockwise and the other one goes clockwise I adjust it until the wheel completely stops and then back it off six turns six clicks and uh, should be good to go. Looking up at the uh, brake hose, it looks to be new too up there, like it's been replaced. This car appears to be serviced pretty regular, so uh, no really issues that pop out. Shocks could probably be replaced, they look original. That's always a good thing to uh, probably replace after years and years of service, even if they don't have a lot of mileage on them. But uh, we'll jack it up in the front when we get done in the back. We'll check the ball joints, stuff like that. You guys probably don't want to watch all that. This video is probably bad enough as it is. Apologize. But, uh, some of you diehard Volkswagen guys like to know this stuff. Here's our cylinder head we did the uh, yesterday, the valve job on. I don't know if you can see the port work in there, but it's, uh, it's got quite a bit of port work. These uh, pretty nice little heads. Set up for cade runs for sure, but uh, should run really well. I'm gonna cut the other one this morning and uh, get those together after we finish this. So yeah, real nice beetle here. A couple little rust spots in the normal spots on these. That's from the uh, foam back there. But uh, other than that, pretty sweet car. So, so there we go. Let me uh, shut this off. I'm gonna wash my hands, adjust the brakes, finish up my uh, service here. You guys had a great day. Nice little puffy clouds. Uh, still got the moon over there, best of both worlds. Moon and the sun, same time. You can't beat it. All right, guys, have a good day. Have a little oil containment bucket. Always a good idea to keep the oil in the uh, bucket and out of the ground, you know what I mean? You guys have a great day subscribe like hate the video whatever you like to do and uh try to make the best out of your day